Today on the DML News Podcast, Joe Biden launches a $50 million low blow to Donald Trump. The White House says that, don't worry, Hunter will go to jail if sentenced. And of course, all the videos of Biden looking old are fake. Can't make this up. Biden is thinking about doing amnesty. A young girl is allegedly raped by an illegal alien. Mouthwash causes cancer. And I, goodness gracious, do we have so much more to tell you. And get ready, because today is all unfiltered. Dennis Michael Lynch gives you his word and he will never let you down. He will always fight for America. The only one who really puts his money where his mouth is, is Dennis Michael Lynch. Hello, I'm Dennis Michael Lynch and I thank you for joining me today. Across from me is my son, Denny. On the controls is my son, Ryan, and I am here with you as well. We thank you for joining us. If you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube or listening to us over the uh, airwaves, somehow, some way, we appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. We ask you, please, two things for you to know. Number one, in order for us to re remain in business, we are no longer taking in ads from anywhere. We're getting rid of the ads business. We no longer want to feed the monster that will kill us. Seriously, think about that. We click on these Google ads. We put these Facebook ads. We put them all together. We try to monetize our work, and we're using these people who censor us. So not only are they making money off us, but they're censoring us at the same time. I'm not going to comply to that in the same way that I won't set up a TikTok account so I can put money in my pocket. If you really want to step up and you want to help us, if you really want to do your part in getting the truth out, you will consider joining Team DML. It is only $18 a year. That is $1.50 a month. You could collect Coke cans, seltzer cans, and hand them in and be able to pay for it. But if we get enough people, it helps us stay in business. And on top of that, we ask you to go get the Great American Newsletter. It's completely for free. If you're a member of Team DML, you'll never miss a single one because we give you notifications that they won't give you in your email box. But you go to greatamericannewsletter.com. Calm. And then, of course, the last part I want to tell you before we get into a very interesting show is there are only a few days left of the BOGO sale at DMLCBD.com. It is our last BOGO of the year, most likely, unless there is a change in November. Uh, but, you know, Biden is killing us as much as he's killing you in the wallet. And that's why we're going to start this show off with a hideous, despicable, low blow account of what Donald J. Trump is and what Biden is in a $50 million ad campaign, $50 million being spent just from now to the end of June on this one commercial. Ryan's going to play the video right now. In the courtroom, we see Donald Trump for who he is. He's been convicted of 34 felonies, found liable for sexual assault, and he committed financial fraud. Meanwhile, Joe Biden's been working lowering health care costs and making big corporations pay their fair share. This election is between a convicted criminal who's only out for himself and a president who's fighting for your family. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Dennis, you filled in for me this morning on writing the Great American Newsletter. I had something going on early today, so I couldn't do it. And you chose to focus in on this particular ad. Why did you choose... And I stole your words that it was a low blow. Cheap shot. Cheap shot. Uh, same thing. <laughs> uh, wh why did you choose that approach? Uh, very simple. Uh, I think a very big aspect to all of these court cases that have hit Trump over the past few years, uh, while I do very much believe they are trying to get him out of the race by any means possible, um, one of their big goals is that if they can't get him out of the race, at least assign him a label. And that label is convicted criminal, right. which they say in that ad. So yep. it is not shocking to me. In fact, they didn't do it almost right away after he did get convicted for the hush money stuff. Yep. Uh, but here we are, um, you know, June 18th, 10, nine days away from the first debate. And they're running this $50 million ad on the convicted criminal label. You know, yep. trying to paint him as someone who doesn't care about the American people, is fighting for himself, yada, yada, using a lot of old footage of Biden from his other years, uh, not so much as recent. Right. Um, it's, it's, like you said, blow, blow, cheap shot. It's something you just uh, are, it's just cheesy. It's a cheesy thing to do. Well, one of the things you wrote in your op-ed, and I agree with you completely, is that you thought, in fact, it was a very funny line that you used. Uh, it was, you know, Denny had written that he thought that the, the, the video, the ad would actually backfire. 
yes. against um, Biden. And we'll get to that in a second. But the other thing is, you know, a little sarcasm here is I guess the good news about the ad is that it's $50 million being spent in the United States versus going to Ukraine. But regardless, um, there is a lineup here of things that I want to go over that this advertisement says. First of all, it points out that he's uh, been convicted of 34 felonies and that uh, the E. Jean Carroll uh, sexual assault uh, and financial fraud. So those three things right there, I mean, that is, this is hideous. And the reason why it's hideous, and I agree with you that it's going to backfire, is because the majority of people in the United States can absolutely a a assign themselves into any one of these line items and say, what? L I'll give you an example. So 34 felonies comes from a misdemeanor that had already run through its statute of limitations. Mm -hmm. But then what happens is Alvin Bragg, with the help of the DOJ, to try to find this creative little way to tie it to a felony. With that said, let's remember what falsifying documents were. He didn't falsely sign something. He didn't uh, create a document to make it look like something was that wasn't. He literally assigned a payment to his lawyer under the column of legal expense. What was he supposed to put it under? Marketing? It doesn't make any sense. So think about this. We all have to have our ledgers, right? Whether for business or personal, you meet with your accountant, you got all the different things, you underscore them. I mean, if, if you go to the gas station and you buy gasoline, wouldn't you put that underneath automobile and travel expense? Well, what about if they say, no, well, that should be a consumption expense. I mean, you got to be kidding me. So we're all going to be guilty of that kind of thing. Number two, some woman comes out of the woodwork who Trump says he's never had any kind of relationship with, doesn't know, maybe took a picture at a celebrity outing one day with her. She claims that she was sexually assaulted. She can't remember where it was, when it was, the exact date. And I think she said she wore clothes that weren't even manufactured at that point. So with that said, think about that. We've all been accused of something that we haven't done. How do you prove something that didn't happen? I, it's, it, it's, hey, I didn't do it. But she said you did, $90 million later. And then, of course, the financial fraud. Every single person who has a home who has ever gone for insurance or has ever gone for a home equity line has had to have an established dollar amount put, a value put on that asset. And Trump puts a value on the asset. Insurance companies and banks confirm that value. And yet the state of New York is going to say that he did a wrong. This is what I'm talking about. So where I think it backfires is that every single one of these things is ridiculous, and it is shown time and again that this is just the weaponization. It's the lawfare of trying to take down your political opponent. Right, and look, if you have a pretty decent IQ, I think you can see right through the ad that, you know, Biden is not fighting for the average family. He is allowing the border to be porous and wide open. Um, he is allowing inflation to become rampant. He is not protecting American interests. He's protecting Ukrainian interests. So the entire ad is just um, one big... Uh, falsehood that you know they're pushing on the on the television screen uh and again you know they're trying to use that uh, uh mugshot picture and it's just funny because they're trying to utilize it as something that's negative and you'll see people wearing it on t-shirts as a positive saying hey this is my president i represent everything that's being thrown against him and more because i want him to succeed and fight through all the you know, weaponized lawfare that's been t tossed his way. To your point, you know, the, 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 the video says Biden has been working hard. Biden has been taking more vacations than any other president in modern day history. Number two, uh, businesses are paying a fair share. Really? How much money is Amazon mm. who writes favorable? Because let's not forget, Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post. And Washington Post is basically should just be called the Biden Post. How many shekels has Jeff Bezos, Amazon pay? Yeah. How much money is Facebook and Google paying in, in the amount of fair share taxes? I want people to look that up and see what that is. This is an assault on small businesses. That's what that is. Trump was pro-business. And what, so what happens with Biden is he becomes anti-business by really trying to say that he's trying to get these corporations, who, by the way, are the, the job creators in this country, that he wants to bring them down to their knees. Then I, the, the biggest lie of all, and I could attest to it, Healthcare costs have gone down yeah, under Trump. Was it was bad good. enough under Trump. I was paying twenty one hundred dollars a month for my health insurance. I am paying thirty three hundred dollars a month right now. And my co-pays. I just went the other day. No joke. I had a bug fly in my eye and I couldn't get it out. So I had to go to the eye doctor. The eye doctor goes in. 
I'm done, right? All said and done. I come out. The woman's like, your copay is only $70. I said, only $70? I pay $3,300 a month. She goes, other people come in here, they got a $95 copay. I mean, seriously? I, it's gone, I've gone down? They're going through the roof, right? And then, of course, the last thing is he's fighting for families. You just said it yourself. Fighting for families. We're going to talk about a young girl who was just allegedly raped in New York by another legal alien. We just yeah. reported yesterday a mother of five who was killed in Maryland by an illegal alien. What is he fighting for families? The only fighting I see him doing is for the people of Ukraine. All that and uh, apparently illegal immigrants, because I know we have a story about how he's looking to give some amnesty to, uh, quote, undocumented spouses. So, well, yeah, he's fighting for the wrong families. Exactly. Well, we'll get into that whole thing in a second. But, you know, let, let's keep on this whole Biden and the campaign and the White House thing. Miss... Oh, I, 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 you know, misplaced for the other team, also known as the press secretary, right? LGB, KGP. Yeah, there you go. There you go. She tells the world that these videos of Joe Biden being frozen. Yesterday, we played the one from Barack Obama. Over the weekend, I did a whole lot bet about the one where he, where he uh, at the G7, there's a guy coming down off of a parachuter. He's coming down. Everybody's standing there looking up at this thing. And he literally turns his head the other way and starts walking the other direction like Mr. Magoo. Yeah. And, and, and the, the Italian prime minister. The, yeah, she, she had, had a, to go and yeah. take him and pull him back. I mean, at this point, it's impossible to hide that this guy is frozen in time. So with, with that said, Ryan, play the video right now of uh, KGB. KGB telling us that it's fake videos. There, there seems to be a, a sort of a rash of videos that have been edited to make the president appear especially frail or mentally confused. Um, I, I'm wondering if the, the White House is especially worried about the fact that this, this appears to be a, a, a pattern that we're seeing more of. Yeah, Yeah, and I think you all have called this the cheap fakes video, and that's exactly what they are. They are cheap fakes video. Uh, they are done in bad faith. Uh, and, uh, and some of your news organization uh, have, uh, have been very clear, have stressed that these right-wing, uh, the right-wing critics of the president have a credibility problem uh, because of the fact checkers have repeatedly caught them pushing misinformation and disinformation uh, and so we see this and this is something coming from from your your part of the world calling them cheap fakes and misinformation uh, and uh, I'll quote the Washington Post where they wrote uh, they wrote about this and they said how Republican use misleading videos to attack Biden in a 24-hour period and to their credit we have a conservative Washington examiner uh, did call them out as well, calling out the New York Post. Uh, ironically, several several recent cheap fakes actually attacked the president for thanking troops, for thanking troops. That is what they're attacking the president for. Both in Normandy, this happened, and again in Italy. And uh, I think that it tells you everything that we need to know about how um, how desperate how desperate Republicans are here. Uh, and uh, instead of talking about the president's performance in office, and what I mean by that is his legislative wins, what he's been able to do for the American people across the country, we're seeing these deep fakes, uh, these manipulated videos. Uh, and it is, again, done in bad faith. Dennis, what's your take on this? I mean, is this just, is, is she insulting people like we don't know what we're looking at? Oh, it's, a, it's a total insult. It's why I always joke. I always joke that one day this is the kind of woman that once she's out of this position, she's going to write a tell all because again, I mean, she's complicit in it. The amount of lies that I think she has to push at those pressures every day uh, is just very surmountable uh, and she's not very good at it. So for her to try and say that these are deep fakes when this is a clear indication, I mean, you have at these events, usually multiple camera angle shots of him frail, stumbling, just weak, uh, confused, the hand freezing. A lot of the hand freezing has been happening lately. Oh, yeah. So um, he, lo he looks like a robot. You ever see the robots where the robots are like this and then all of a sudden they get stuck? Yes. It's like a, oh, he's like malfunctioning like yeah, halfway he, through. It's like yes. somebody poured water on his electronics. Yes. And you know? again, they, 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 you can't hide it. It is getting increasingly worse. In it fact, is. It, it's more of an anomaly having an event at this point where everything goes to plan for him, where he, he doesn't have a freeze up. And I don't think we've had one of those in a while. You know, over the weekend, I, I was thinking to myself about how it is that the Democrats, especially the top Democrats like Obama and the Hollyweirds like George Clooney. I mean, these are some of the top names in the country, not alone, let alone the world. And how it is that they're just ignoring what it is that the rest of us all see. And it's a charade. 
And I say to myself, why is this happening like this? And the only thing that I came up with as being a logical thinker is that Barack Obama does not want a Gavin Newsom to go into the ring and give a real legitimate chance for a victory over Trump. Barack Obama knows that he can't control Gavin Newsom. I, don't even, I think he knows that he can't control Kamala Harris, but he can control Joe Biden. And it gives Obama the opportunity to, s to spend another four years as the president of the United States, albeit from his mansion in, uh, in Massachusetts. Totally. And, you know, it, again, it, it, like how you just said it, it's a lot of those elitist billionaires. I mean, Melinda Gates mm -hmm. just did an interview. I know we don't have the video on the, on the docket here today, but, you know, she, she just goes off. I would never vote for Trump. My vote's going to Biden. Uh, the way Trump has talked about women and the way he treats women. And it's just such a emotional, incomprehensible response because you're going to go off of your emotional opinion about him and not all the good he has done for the country and everything Biden has undone in terms of all the good that was committed. It's just, you know, you have these people who are so out of touch with what every everyday Americans are dealing with and they get on the interview with Gail King and say, you know, Trump's the worst, Biden's the best. And it's just, it's gross. Yeah. You, you, know what, you know what's astonishing to me? Who just said that? Melinda Gates just said Melinda that? Melinda Gates, yeah. Okay. I guarantee you that if Melinda Gates, Gates had a podcast and somebody came to her and said, hey, um, Bill Clinton's in town. Would you like to interview him? She'd be like, oh, absolutely. This is a man who took advantage of a young intern in the White House and allegedly stuck a cigar where things are not supposed to be stuck in except for, you know, Mel. body parts. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> right? Yeah. right? So, I mean... She'll go along the Clinton is fine, right? But, and Joe Biden, there are no countless videos, I mean, countless videos of Joe Biden sniffing and rubbing young girls' hair. If Trump did anything close to that, the commercial that you saw on television here this week with the whole 34 felonies, you know, that, that he's run, that, that $50 million would be videos of Trump sniffing and rubbing the heads of young seven-year-olds. But that's, you know, they ignore that for Joe Biden. I, I, I don't get it. Look, now, even, even, yeah. even beyond gender, the race part. I mean, in the newsletter, we talked about, I think we have it coming up too, but just about how, you know, black voters are increasingly, especially young black voters are increasingly getting away from the Democrat party because you got... Biden saying, if you're not Democrat, you're not black. You got Governor Holchel of New York saying black kids don't know about computers. If anything, it's like they really show their almost uh, racist rhetoric when they talk about the black community as if they you know, can't understand, you know, I don't know, just basic anything. So, yeah, you know, where's her uh, comment on that about how Democrats are completely, you know, failing the black community? It's, totally. I mean, over the weekend, a great, a, a great optics. You've got Obama and Biden hanging out with Hollyweird. People who cannot associate with normal people because of the amount of money and, and the fame and the fortune, and the pampering they get. And while he's doing that, Trump is hanging out in Detroit, meeting with blacks. And they said downright, you're here with us. Biden has never come. Obama has never come. You know, so the idea that Joe Biden is fighting for families, especially black families, explain to me how. Yeah. Explain to me how I, you know. You can say whatever you want. It's the proof is in the pudding. And the proof here is that Donald J. Trump has done a lot for the black communities, continues to want to do a lot for the black communities. I believe he's going to take Ben Carson as his VP to further help the black communities. Because let's not forget, Ben Par Carson served as HUD, yes. the HUD director. So that's a lot of you know housing and urban development. And I can see where he would say, hey, my vice president is going to be uh, uh, Ben Carson because his whole point of being the VP is he's going to work with black communities so we can fix them. Let me tell you something. This is a runaway train. Now, meanwhile, going on to uh, another thing with Biden real quick is that the White House has said now that if Hunter Biden actually does get a prison sentence for what he was just convicted on the gun charges, that the White House will not step in the way that he will, uh, Joe Biden will actually allow his son to serve his prison time. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what they're claiming because they were kind of pressured about it earlier last week. Uh, and, of course, KGB, LGB uh, wouldn't give a straight answer. And now she's claiming that, yes, Biden will do no intervention, won't commute the sentencing, uh, that he's going to allow it to be what it is. And now the real question is, what will the sentencing actually be?
Do we know when the sentencing is scheduled for? Mm, I could try and look it up real quick. Yeah, so here's my, here's my contention, right, without even knowing what the date is. He says that he's going to allow a, a prison sentence to fly, that he's not going to step in and intervene. First of all, the number one reason why he would do that, not do that, is because, obviously, it would look so biased. Uh, it? Apparently, October 9th. Okay. It's kind of a while away. Yeah. Well, gee, I wonder why that is like that. So keep in mind something very, very important. I would believe that Joe Biden, through some sort of proxy, is going to make sure that that judge goes completely lenient. Mm -hmm. Do not be surprised if the Democrats aren't talking to the judge in the New York City case to say, do not put him in prison. Do not put him in prison. Give him house arrest or something like that for like a month, right? Make it very difficult for the convention to take off. That, that, that I can see happening in a big way. And the reason why is because if you put Trump in prison and you don't put Hunter in prison, forget it. It crushes them in, the, in November. So if, and I think they know at this point that Americans have been turned off by what's been done to Trump, by and large. They're going to keep the narrative going with the commercial. But at the same time is, I think they may say, we empower this guy on a runaway train. Let's not. Let's just say, you know, even, even two weeks or three weeks or whatever it is, starting after the convention. Okay, fine. So this way he can't be out going and doing his thing for a month leading up, right? And then what happens there is that because you let Trump slide, Hunter's going to be able to slide. That's where I think this goes. I could be wrong, but I could see the strategy in that whole thing. It would make sense. Um, again, it, it's it's got to be a little concerning, though, because I, I know Trump's uh, sentencing is supposed to be right July 11. July 11, which is right before the RNC. A few days. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, and I know he, and I, again, you know, the more I've been thinking about it after you pointed it out yesterday, I actually would really really like to see Ben Carson in that, in that VP role. I think that would be a powerhouse ticket. It would. Um, and I think reports are saying that he's going to announce it at the RNC, but maybe he's got to do it a little bit before if the sentencing he's is not going to go his way. Well, here, here's what happens. There is, Trump knows how to build up. He knows the build up. He knows yeah. to, to, get, to get the static. You know, everybody's like, ah. The person who's going to be the VP will know before that. Has to. Yeah. I mean, it was, yeah. If he's smart, he tells the person individually and says, if you leak it, you're out. Right? I don't think Ben Carson would be Ben a, Carson a would leaker. never leak it. No. Neither, n none of them would leak it. However, it may actually be leaked. Who knows? But whoever it is that he picks, if it's Ben Carson, great. J.D. Vance right now is the flavor of the month. I don't think it's, I, I think that's purposely done to mislead everybody to go to one way. It's just the way Trump does it. Right. He does the slip of the hand. Look over here, and then it comes over here. Do you think it's a reception tactic? Like, see how people are talking about it? Because oh, I think so. Brian had mentioned it, what was it, a month ago or so, about like, oh, it's got to be Tim Scott. And I think it was because Tim Scott was pushed so hard in terms mm -hmm. of like the idea. Mm -hmm. And then you got people's responses to it. Uh, he's a little bit dry. Uh, he's not really, so maybe it's just like, Feedback tactic. That is part that. of the problem with Trump. Trump always goes based on what is popular at the time or the person who gets the most hits on Fox News or whatever it may be. Hopefully he's learned his lessons from making very bad hires. It's the one knock everybody has on him. Yeah. With that said, whoever it is that's going to be in there, let me tell you what they're not going to stand for. They're not going to stand for amnesty. And that's what Joe Biden has going on right now, right? He's The new thing now is he's going to try to get himself some new voters yeah. by giving amnesty? Well, according to this report, um, the administration is planning to announce an executive action to protect, and I don't use this word as my own, undocumented spouses of American citizens, which would shield about, five, about half a million immigrants from deportation, according to four different White House sources. An immigration advocate is calling it the best thing since DACA. Yeah. So let, let's talk about deportation for a second, because there are no deportations. OK, it's a tactic. It's just a hey, you vote for me. This is what you're going to wind up seeing. You know, we, we are not as a country deporting spouses right now. All right. As a country, we're lucky if we're dis uh, deporting hardened criminals. All right. If we could even find them. In fact, give us the ice. What, what was the, also the, there's an ice report? Let's pack this all together. Yes. Yeah, so the ice, uh, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement's uh, agency's non detained docket has surged to 7.4 million cases in fiscal year 2024, 
with projections to reach 8 million by year's end. The stock, at part of ICE's Alternatives to Detention Program, provides case management to support uh, uh, case management support to released illegal immigrants, helping them comply with release conditions and increasing court appearance rates. Yeah. That's so let, let me tell you what that results in. We talked to you about uh, Mrs. Morin uh, yesterday, who was killed five children. She has. She was killed by an illegal alien, who, by the way, had already killed somebody. Uh, from, what was it, El Salvador? El Salvador. Killed somebody from El Salvador, fled, came to the United States, was in L.A., wound up hurting, uh, assaulting a nine-year-old girl and her mother, and then goes on to kill this woman. So this is just at the New York Post this morning. An Ecuadorian migrant is in custody after a 13-year-old girl, girl was sexually assaulted in a secluded park of a vast Queens Park. Good God. The migrant, who sources believe entered the country in 2021, was taken into police custody early Tuesday, five days after the, the 13-year-old girl. Um, oh, wait. Five days after the girl and a 13-old boy were held at knife point with a machete-style blade in the sickening broad daylight attack. Good God. The bust comes... What is it? The bus comes after the NYPD blasted out images and footage of the young man they were looking for on Monday night. Th this is Joe Biden's America. Why don't, you know, D Donald J. Trump should start playing some ads, like $50 million worth of ads, yeah. and say, uh, Joe Biden's fighting for your family? Here's how he's fighting for your family. Yep. He killed Lincoln Riley. He killed uh, uh, Miss Moran. He killed, I mean, he's got blood on his hands, this guy. Yeah, I mean, uh, Trump had termed it a few... Uh few weeks, few months back, uh, you know, migrant crime. I would really like to see the statistics under every illegal immigrant that came over, what kind of crime they uh, committed, and then the category breakdown, especially when it comes to uh, rape and murder here. Look, Dennis, cut you off here. Sorry. The bottom line is we need mass deportation. We need to stop all legal and illegal immigration into this country. Remember, everybody forgets about this. We're all looking at the border because it's so insane. But half of the illegal immigration into this country has been historically through means of visa violators. People who are allowed to come here legally then decide to overstay their visa. This has been 50% of the count that we have had forever. Until the last couple of years here with Joe Biden, now it's blown through the border. We have got to stop that. The only way to stop this in full is Donald J. Trump needs to build a team that is going to, on day one, say we are going to deputize more than just ICE in order to detain and to get rid of these illegal aliens. He's going to have to fast track things through court. Now, whoever his AG is, somebody who's brilliant in law, will be able to figure out how to circumvent these crazy long processes that you're talking about and get it to this way. It's a mess. It's, it, you know, when Pete, let me change it. When we put people into this country, when we give them their citizenship, you've seen the videos before. It's one person sitting up there who has the, 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 the authority to do so, and it's a pool of 300 immigrants. And they all stand their hands up, and they pledge allegiance, and they get all this stuff, and they automatically are all brought into the U.S. by means of that group session, right? right. So that's what we need to have. We have to have a group court where it says, is there anybody in this country, uh, in this room, who did not come into this country illegally? And somebody holds their hands up and they say, yeah, I, you know, I, I didn't. I, you know, I didn't. OK, you you're going to put to the side. Anybody else? No, you all came here through the border. OK, you're all going home. <laughs> That's it. That's the way it goes. And you just and process and send these people out, because not only would we rid of the people here, but we would stop the people from coming because they would see that sort of thing. And then we need to do raids on businesses. If you're a business and you're hiring illegal aliens, I want the cameras. I want the YouTube or the Rumble feed. I want it on the Twitter feed. I want to see these people, these these business owners, be cuffed right there. And I don't say they can't do it because I've seen people cuffed for for simpler things than that. You know, the FBI knocking on the door. Let's get these people who are hiring illegal aliens cuffed. And then once that happens, people will stop hiring them. And when we put this all together, this problem stops. And President Trump also would have the power through his presidency and the pen. To just sit there and say, I'm stopping all legal immigration because it is a national security threat to this country. We cannot vet people. It's stopping. And we got to stop for five, six years until we turn around and make a new system up to where we have a limited amount of people, maybe 50,000 people a year, 1,000 per state. And these people have to come in with, with real merit. 
They've got to bring something that we don't already have to the country. And until that happens, these kind of murders and rapes and, you know, uh, uh, dilution of wages, especially in the minority communities, is going to continue to continue to continue. Totally. And, you know, even if I had to choose a prioritization of like who to go for first, because you're right, they, they should be holding these business owners accountable. Uh, I wish I had it in front of me, but there was a, a graphic that the Daily Mail had posted a few days back of all the different international gangs and syndicates that have sprouted in this country oh. between Mexican cartel, Venezuela's Tren de Agua, um, China's Triad. Uh, and, and they showed on the map of where they were all being located. I mean, start there. Get them out. Because th those are the guys that are, are, are funding these criminal operations within our own country, and they shouldn't even be here. They shouldn't be here. We have invaders in the country. And I understand not all these people are bad people. I understand that they're not all looking to hurt people. You know, there's some people who are really good, God-fearing people who here just want to work. They have no work back at home. They're trying to do whatever they can. I understand it. My heart bleeds for all of you. But we also have that situation in Africa, up and down, left and right. You want to see some UNICEF videos? You know, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. Majority of the world is living in poverty. We can't solve it all. The only way to solve it is to help these countries back at home. Get these people who are hardworking people, get them back home working back there. You cannot, if we go back to the analogy I gave all the time, you're on an airplane, I'm with you and me, we're going, and there's an emergency and the face masks go down. I am going to put the face mask on you first. No, I'm not. See, usually as a father, I'm going to do that. But the other way is I got to do it to myself first. I got to take the mask from you, put it on me because I can't take care of you if I can't breathe. So that's why I put it on me first and then on you second. So you go against what the natural, the natural feeling is. Americans are great. We're very, very generous people. We, we give to charity. We open our arms. But at the end of the day, we're giving the air mask to other people. And we're dying as a country. We've got to change that thought process, put it on our own, fix our own, and then we can fix around the world if that's what needs to be done. And it's doable in Latin America. I mean, look at Argentina and El Salvador. I mean, in the last year, year and a half, they've really gotten in their act together. And if anything, we are taking, like, that, that illegal that just killed the, the mom, killed someone in El Salvador, knew he was going to be held accountable for it and fled the country to come here knowing yeah. that he could scapegoat. I mean, it sounds almost backwards. We would, we'd be in a world where that's the case now, but it's doable. Get those countries in order and we don't have to deal with their, their worst, the worst. Immigration has become a cancer in this country. And, you know, people say this is a country of immigrants. No, it's not. No, it's not. This is a country of citizens. This is a country of laws that invites immigrants into our country. And that has been abused. It's been abused, abused by the people who are coming here and abusing our system and using our country as just one big uh, ATM card. And it's been abused by the people in D.C. who want to get cheap votes and the businesses that want to get cheap labor. OK, I have never, ever, ever hired illegal aliens in my businesses, and I am still a very big success. It can be done. You do not have to have illegal aliens in order to be a success in this world. You do not need it. That being said, I just said the word cancer. What the hell is going on? I, I read your, uh, the morning, so Dennis, again, Dennis stepped in and did the Great American uh, Newsletter for me because I couldn't do it. So I'm reading it this morning. I wake up, I'm reading it, and I see that Listerine Cool Mint, which, by the way, I have an empty bottle on my sink in my bathroom because I just was using it with the stuff with my mouth, having the oral surgery. Cancer? Yeah. So, um, Ryan, Ryan, you're the one who found this, right? Yeah, so... Scientists has claimed that daily use of Listerine Cool Mint mouthwash could increase the risk of esophageal and col colorectal cancer. Um, the research comes from an institute out in Belgium, and they found that after three months of daily use, uh, two different bacteria that are both linked to cancer were more abundant in the mouth. So, let me tell you, if that is, if 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 that is linked to something, like if that can be proven. Whoever makes Listerine, I'm going to short that stock because that business is going out of business. I won't be, after I read that, because I'll, I use mouthwash too. I, I will not be using Listerine Cool Mint. Listerine, if, if it's in Listerine, it's probably in another one too. I wouldn't use any of it. Yeah. Yeah. So just go around with bad breath if you have to. <laughs> or have a, have, a, have, a, have a sugary mint. That will help.
Say, <laughs> the there, sugar. I was going to say, there might be maybe some like uh, do-it-yourself alternatives that you can do, like maybe pure mint leaf with like a water rinse. Got to be something. Something. Tell, I mean, I don't know. There's just so many products now that could give the cancer, and I think it's because they're just putting all this stuff in, in that, you know, is a natural for the human body. Uh, and, and so talking about putting liquid in the mouth, there's a teacher in L.A. or in California somewhere who uh, drank, got drunk, and was teaching. What's the story yes, here? Yes, yeah. A second grade teacher in California, Wendy Munson, who was arrested for being drunk in class, is no longer facing charges because prosecutors concluded that, quote, it is not illegal to teach drunk. Munson's blood alcohol level was over twice the legal limit when she was arrested while teaching in an elementary school uh, last year. After months of investigation, however, the uh, county district attorney's office announced that uh, this week no charges could be filed. So we're going to put Trump in jail for assigning a check written to his lawyer as a legal expense. But a woman who, as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, puts children in harm's way because if she was drinking and driving with children in the car, she would be held accountable or who knows in California, maybe you're not allowed, maybe you're allowed to do that kind of thing too. But my God, can you imagine having your child being in a classroom with a drunk twice, a, twice yeah. over the limit? You know, I was going to try and use Kelly as an example, but she's high school now. I mean, this is elementary school. Elementary like, school. Yeah. This, I, this, see, this, this, this is why Joe Biden's video is not going to work. And why Trump, I hope, has some real creative people on his team that are going to create videos like this. If you're a drunk teacher, you're protected under Joe Biden. You know, I mean, the backwardsness in California is just, it's just, Dennis, I'll go, I'll go, I'll say the backwardness in this entire country. The backwardness in this entire country is absolutely insane. And at least Denny, myself, and Ryan are trying to bring some perspective to it. With that said, that's it for us today. We appreciate you being with us in a big way. One more time, just to go down, rattle down in less than 30 seconds. Number one, please, if you get the opportunity, if you're team, uh, if you're not Team DML already, please, for 18 bucks, help us stay in business. We'd appreciate you become a team member. $18 for the entire year. You get a lot of benefits. Go to teamdml.com to learn more. Also, you could just download the DML News app for free from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. You could get to Team DML via the last tab, which is the Interact tab. So many other great things on that uh, app that you could get every single day. And of course, the Great American Newsletter. Go to greatamericannewsletter.com and you wind up signing up for free with your email and you'll wind up getting us in your inbox every single day. It's one of the most popular conservative newsletters there is. We just started a month ago. Our open rate is almost triple that of the industry standard. So people are really loving what they get every single morning. And then last but not least, BOGO, B-O-G-O, buy one, get one. Buy one, get one free. DMLCBD.com slash BOGO. It's one of the last ones, if not the last one, we'll have for the year. Already in four days, two of our most popular products, the Premier and the Power Tincture, are gone. Mm. They're gone. They're out of stock. People coming in, they're buying everything. Next, I think, in line is the soft gels uh, or the gummies. One of the, Ashley was telling me earlier today. So anyway, that said, do us a favor. Do yourself a favor. If you want to improve your sleep, if you want to give yourself a chance to boost the immune system and diminish the anxiety and the pain and improve the skin, Dennis wrote a whole thing today about how I use it all the time for my face, whatever. It was fantastic. He's true about it. I use it all day long. He uses it too. I use it this morning. There you go. So during the summer months, I want to make sure you know everything's okay. Everything's so, okay. Yeah. All right. Peace that said, you. thank you so much for joining us. Until the next time, may God bless you, your family, and the United States of America. And for today's Team DML blessing, I would like to give it to uh, Marilyn, Marilyn Rotner. I hope I said your last name right. All right. Have a great day. Get the Dennis Michael Lynch podcast every day by subscribing on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And download the DML News app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store for breaking news, merchandise, films, exclusive content, and Team DML.